Welcome back to the shop. I'm Kirk Anderson. Now in this video, it's a two for one. I'll be making two projects in one video. I'll be making a napkin holder and a paper towel holder for the kitchen. Now, I know that I harp on using hand tools most of the time on these learning development steps, but the circular saw does make a quick job of it, and when you're using a speed square as a guide, you can get a nice 90 degree cut. Now, the first project we're gonna build is the paper towel holder, which has a round base. And the first thing we need to do is find the center of the board that we're gonna use to cut the round base from. Just put the straight edge up against the corners of opposite sides of the boards and make a mark towards where you think the center would be. And then do the same thing for the other two opposite corners and make a mark. And where those marks intersect, that would be the dead center of that board. Now remember also, this is your project. You make the base how you want it. If you want a square base, make it square. If you want an octagon, make it an octagon. Do it the way that you want the piece to look. To mark out the layout lines of a circle, the best tool to use is a compass. Just measure it out, put the pin of the compass at the mark that's dead center of that board, and then draw the circle. Now, there are a few ways you can cut the circle out. The easiest way by far with a board this thick is with a jigsaw. Now also, it's kind of a small piece, so you wanna make sure that the piece is clamped down tight to the work surface, that's so it won't move around. And of course, you won't be able to make the cut in one pass. You're gonna to have to make a cut, unclamp it, reclamp it, to position it to an area that hasn't been cut yet, and then cut again. And you're probably going to have to do that at least three or four times. Now another tool you could use to do this is a bandsaw if you're lucky enough to have one. Another one is also a scroll saw. Now when the pieces start getting a little too thick, that's when the scroll saw is no longer of use. And if you really want to get down and dirty with a hand saw, the coping saw would be the best tool for cutting a circle. Now let's drill a hole in the center, and we already know where the center is because it's been marked, for the center dowel that will hold the roll of paper towels. Just use a bit that's the same size of whatever dowel you're using. I'm using a one inch dowel, so it's a one inch bit. Perfect fit. Now let's clean up the disc a little with a little sanding. Now this first sanding is more just to get rid of all the cut marks on the edges. We'll sand a little bit more later on. Now we also have the outer post that needs a nice hold so it can go in. Now to cut the dowel that will be the post for the center post, I'm going to use a miter box. The smaller dowel was small enough that I didn't have to use a saw. All I did was use a straight razor and I just cut the surfaces and then snapped it. And then a little sanding on the dowel. This does two things. Of course on the exposed piece, it takes away the sharp edges. And then on the piece that's gonna go in to the hole, it just makes it a little bit easier to slide that dowel in when it's chamfered. 
Then it's just a matter of assembly. I'm basically going to put this together with some glue and a little bit of clamp pressure. You can also drive a screw in from the bottom. I was going to put a screw in it, but when I drilled the hole, I drilled a little bit too deep so the screw has nothing to bite onto. So it'll just be held together with glue. And to make sure the center post is parallel, I will use the speed square to make sure that it's at that 90 degree angle. Then a little glue in the hole and just insert the outside post. Now for the napkin holder, the first thing is to cut a board that's the length of the longest piece, which is the top piece. The top piece, the length is longer than the bottom piece or the base. and then cut the top piece to dimension. Now, the piece that's remaining is gonna to be too long, so first thing we'll do is cut that down to the length. And then after that's done, we'll cut the base down to its width. Now the hardest part of this build is determining where to drill the holes. Now, if you purchase the book that these plans are in, I go into step-by-step -step detail of how I determined where to drill the holes. But even with a project like this, you can eyeball it. It doesn't have to be precise down to the nano inch. What I'm getting at, there are many ways to determine where the holes are. The only thing I will say is you want to determine where you want the holes on the top piece to use that as a guide to drill the holes in the base. I hope that makes sense. Now in drilling all these holes, what I also did, I made sure I had a scrap piece underneath it that's so it would prevent the majority of any tear out. And as you can see on the scrap piece of wood there, you can see some of my mathematics when I was determining of where to put that hole. Now to determine where to put the holes in the base, this is where eyeballing it really comes into play. It's really hard to get this perfect. But once you get it to where it's pretty well perfect, clamp the two pieces together, and then make a mark with the drill bit just so you can make the hole. Now remember, we want the holes that's on the top to be a little bit larger, that's so it'll slide up and down on the posts. So if the holes are the same size as the dowels you're using, you're gonna have to enlarge the holes. There are a few ways to do that. You can use the drill bit or you can get some sandpaper and get it in there and sand the holes bigger. Now I'm gonna sand everything now before I put the posts in. I'm gonna sand everything, including the paper towel holder, to 220 grit sandpaper. And then any of the exposed edges, I am going to round over the edges quite well. Now here's what I was saying about how I cut the other dowel because it was a smaller dowel. Just use a straight edge, score the dowel, and then snap it. Now I would usually brush the glue into the hole, but I didn't have any brushes so the screw was what was handy.
So there again, just glue, insert, and with a little bit of clamping pressure, and the dowel should be nice and secure in there. Now everything's together and everything sanded to 220, and now it's time to apply a finish. And I'm going to use a gloss wipe-on polyurethane. These things are going to be in the kitchen, they're going to get wet, they're going to get dirty, they're going to need to get wiped down, so a gloss is the best finish for that. And I just love wipe-on polys. Now these are just pine, so you could stain it, you could do almost anything you want with it. It's your project. Now the last thing to do, after the last coat of polyurethane has dried, which there was actually five coats that were put on, is to put little rubber feet on the bottoms. This is just to help prevent the items from moving around when they're sitting on the counter or on the table. And that's it. Very simple, easy projects but they look good and they work well. And who doesn't need napkin holders or paper towel holders? Well, I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as I always say, all you woodworkers out there, just get out there and cut some wood.